Ooh, the smell alone is everything to me. What's up everyone, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope that you're all well. We're adding to the Wine Fairy series with a Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> It's one of the most popular red wines out there and I felt it was fitting to ease us into the fall and out of the rosés. But hey, who knows, maybe next week I might come back with another one for the rosés or I still haven't done a reason yet. But I figured before September is done, I have to start off with a Cabernet Sauvignon because it is quintessential. Not only is it a good introduction into the fall as it pairs well with a lot of fall foods, it is also a good introduction for those of you who may be on the fence about getting into red wines. You see, out of all the wines, red wine is the one that a lot of people don't really like to play with. It's the tannins, it's the taste, it's the way it feels in your mouth. But I hope, I can't even remember if I tried this one before, but I wanted to do something different. I hope that this one is good. This is a solid ground. We used to have this brand at the restaurant I worked at. I don't know if they still sell it there. I don't know if I've ever tried it or I've seen solid ground in another red varietal, but I'm hoping it's good. It's very similar to one of my favorite and the most basic Cabernet Sauvignons of all time. Can you guess which one it is? I'll wait for it. If you guess Jay Laura, you're right. It's funny, people used to come to the Italian wine bar to order Californian reds, but hey. If you like it, I love it. This is another Californian red. You can't go wrong and oh, it ain't a twist off. So watch me make a fool out of myself right now. So whenever you're opening a wine, first of all, you're not supposed to cover the label, but I was a wine fair, I wasn't a server, so I never had to open wines at the table. You're never supposed to twist the bottle. You're supposed to move the knife around the lip or just underneath, but I'm gonna twist it because hey. We won't be here all day. Now that I've scored it, you just take it off. Here comes the real horror. <laughs> if you thought that was bad, wait for this. I swear, this is the most entertaining part of the video. Me trying to get it open without getting the cork stuck in. I did do a couple, couple banquet shifts. If you work in restaurants, you know what that is, but basically it's a blind girl opening a wine bottle. This is a recipe for disaster. Since I can't see, try to poke it on an angle first to get it in the center. If you don't get it in the center, if you get it too far to the edge, you might snap the cork, which I've done many times before. And you don't want that because then you have to get really ratchet with it. Like, I mean, a butter knife in there and then strain the wine out. And it's just, that's not the vibe we're going for. So you can put on your knee, you can put on the table, and then you just twist. Why does that sound like that? You're opening a wine. You never want it to pop, oh, pop at the top. No popping at the top, okay? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So close, but so far. Ooh, okay, that pop wasn't horrible. Ooh, it smells good. I'm excited for this. Red wines are those things, it's literally, I don't know, maybe just me personally, my favorite is, of course, white wine, and then rosé, and then red. When I find a good red, it's love. When I don't, return to sender. But here goes. Of course, you're going to have a bigger glass than the last because you want it to aerate. If this was actually expensive, which it's not, then you would put in a decanter for, say, an hour. Have it while you sip slow. What I love about red wines versus white and rosé is it really does create a vibe which is why i love it for the winter time it's all about cuddle season if you want to have something that's going to be very delectable there we go i should actually be pouring like this so you can see the label and that's why we're black today do you see the splashback already as per usual off first whiff this is it. I already know I'm going to love this. It's very similar to the J. Lore Cab I mentioned earlier. It is 13.5 alcohol level, which is on the lower side for reds. And it is also 7 grams of sugar, which is 2 grams more than J. Lore. I wanted something that was on the dry side. I was actually looking at the apothecary, apothecary, apothec one. I don't know. It's the one with the A on it. I was looking at that one because I know that's a crowd pleaser, but it said 16 grams of sugar. And I was like, that's a little bit much for me. So... Let's see. I'm definitely getting black cherries, which is very quintessential, very expected for any Cabernet Sauvignon. 
I'm not getting any type of minerality. A lot of times it's described as graphite. Think of mechanical lead, like a mechanical lead pencil, lead. I don't know why the sommeliers describe things that are so unappealing for something that should be delectable, but hey. I am getting a spice. Can't really put my finger on it. If I wanted to just like say something to say something, I would say cinnamon, but it's not quite cinnamony, but it has that same kind of warmth to it. You know, like it's giving very fall and Thanksgiving. Moment of truth. Oh wait, before I, before I sip, let's just see. It's supposed to be medium bodied. There is no real film when you swirl it around. So it actually looks light to me, which I prefer. My favorite red, well, I'll save it. I'll save it for when I show it, but it's on the lighter side. So we'll see how this is. Ooh, that is good. I need to sit for a bit with that because that was, I mean, I knew it was going to be good because it smells amazing, but this for $17.95, $18 because when I was doing research for you guys some of the bottles I wanted to get were $230 I said not today not for a wine testing video okay honestly for something under $25 this is not bad yeah I'm here for this I wouldn't drink too much of this because it's got tannins in there and as a lot of you know and a lot of you who hate red wines know Tannins are the reason why a lot of people get those headaches and bad hangovers. So this is something that I would definitely sip slow, share with a friend, sneaky links, you know, whatever it is, whatever your vibe is. Now that I've had two sips of this, the first thing I would say is you definitely get the black cherry. You are getting the currants. These are two very common notes that you'll probably taste in every single Cabernet Sauvignon. Because this one is from California, it is supposed to be more on the mineral side, like I said, have that graphite, but I ain't really getting that, but I'm not mad at that because whenever I taste things, when they say stone, wet this, bottom of the foot, I'm like, who wants to drink that? No, 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 thank you. You can keep that. So at least I'm not getting that, but there is a complexity to it. I can't quite put Oh, it's so good because it's not overpowering. So as I mentioned before, this is a perfect drink to ease into the fall with or to ease into drinking red wines. It's very smooth. It doesn't have that feeling where it's sucking your soul out because it's so drying. And most importantly, I think it's going to complement a lot of fall foods well. Now, I don't know about you, but I usually just have Cabernet Sauvignon to sip. Usually when I'm out with my girls or we're having a house party, there'll be a bottle of two or 10 <laughs> over at someone's house and we're just having really good conversations or a games night. But if you were to go out and eat, I would recommend this if you're having something that's grilled very, very savory, of course, meats, but you can really switch it up. I, I feel like reds, it's like day and night when it comes to which varietal and sometimes within the varietal, depending on what region, like a French Cabernet Sauvignon, it's not the same as an Australian one, which is definitely not the same as a Californian one, but it all depends on your preference. I prefer the California ones because they're more agreeable, as the Psalms like to say. It's just a really super smooth, easy drinking. There's no frills, really. It just has that slight complexity. Like I said, it's got that little spiciness to it. There is this depth without it feeling too heavy. And overall, like the whole experience of it is really good. I get caramel notes, but then again, whenever I smell a red wine, I always get caramel notes, but it has that kind of, it almost smells smoky, like a smoky butterscotch instead of just a caramel. Oh, it's so luscious. Look, it has me using all the words I never use. Colors giving velvet, the feel is giving velvet, the taste is giving velvet. You would never guess that this was $18, but I mean, I'm here for it. Yeah, I actually really, really like this one. If you're someone who more likes a heavier red wine that has more of a punch, you won't hate this. 
You might want to wait until I do like a Malbec or a Shiraz or something, but this is where it's at. I love this. I love Pinot Noirs. I love, <laughs> I can't even pronounce it, but there's a whole bunch of Italian reds that I really love that when I get to, I better learn how to pronounce for you. I'm definitely on the starter side when it comes to red wines, like when it gets really full bodied and dry and it's just doing the most, I'm just like, ah, count me out on that one. But this is everything highly recommended i was a little apprehensive i was going to be a basic b and just buy j lore and review it like it was my first time but i figured let's do a little blind taste test and try something different highly highly recommended there's something else in here i want to say to you but i can't really okay now i'm getting the graphite but it's subtle and it actually works with this wine. It's just funny, whenever I can taste that pencil lead as they describe it, I'm like, this is nasty. <laughs> but it's okay, it's very, very subtle. Usually with Cabernet Sauvignons, you're gonna get either a smoky, savory kind of vibe or you're gonna get a sweet and fruity. And this one's definitely giving sweet and fruity even though it's dry, it's sweeter than I thought it would be, which I don't mind because probably not as sweet as the Apothic one, but at the same time there's there's definitely like a woodsy they would probably say cedar but the nose doesn't know what it knows it's definitely giving woodsy though let me let me paint a picture with this line because this takes me back to a time imagine being cozied up in a cottage with a security board and maybe steak for dinner and then you're served this by the fireplace acting like I don't live in a bachelor with no fireplace but hey sometimes you got to use your imagination definitely now all I'm getting is woodsy black currant so it's still smoky woodsy fruity those are the three things I would say the color is not really dark but it's also not light when you hold it up you can still see through it. I mean, I also drank quite a bit of it, but this is the kind of wine that is not as opaque as some other reds. These are all things you want to look for if you're wanting to become more bougie with wines. I mean, don't do this in a restaurant because people are like, why is this one so extra? But if you're at home and you're just like wanting to have the full experience, you can always tilt your glass. I ain't going to be mad. But yeah, it is pretty opaque. It is giving not only the black currant scent and taste, but also the look. It's a very rich plum color. I'm not getting a plum flavor at all. It's literally just black currants and black cherries, some kind of wood, a little bit of smoke, and a little spice. The spice is not like a spicy spice, like hot spice. That would be weird. It's more just like a, you know what this gives? No, I was going to say this would be perfect for mulled wine, but it not really. That's all I'm going to sip today because I don't play with red wine. It's not like when I'm drinking rosé. You know, you can rosé all day or you can finish a white wine bottle and be like, oh, where did time go? With reds, I don't play that way. I had so many instances when I'd hang out with my friends from where I used to work and there would be bottles on bottles and we'd look the next day and be like, how did five of us finish 12 bottles? The math is not mathing, make it make sense. So I learned my lesson the hard way, which is why today we're gonna wrap it up here. I hope that you guys enjoy this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe, and share. Let me know down below if you like Cabernet Sauvignon in which region you like the most, or if you don't, what your favorite wine is. So until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.